Hi everyone, um, welcome to my channel. Again, uh, we have another lesson today. So what we'll be looking at today is uh, scalars. Um, okay, let's just say vectors and scalars. I think it's better if you say it like that. Vectors and scalars, basically, that's what we'll be looking at. All right, so we'll, be, we'll just try and actually just go through as much as we can on this chapter. Now, this is a very fundamental chapter. I, I normally prefer to, to, to be a little bit thorough when I'm going through this chapter because this is, this is basically going to build up to almost all the chapters that you're going to encounter at first year level, whether it's magnetism, electricity, forces, rotation, whatever it is, uh, angular mo whatever it is, generally it's just going to be vectors. There are a few sessions that are not going to be vectors where you're not gonna where you're not going to involve much of vectors, things like waves, but even there you I mean I you may talk about some direction, just depends though. But generally things like waves you don't actually talk much about vectors, but otherwise most of the chapters uh, are not going to actually um involve waves. As long as there's no force, things like that, then you're safe. But Generally, there's just a lot of forces at first year physics. All right. So, um, so before I start again, if you like this video, and you watch it, and then you enjoy this video, uh, and then you want us to actually make uh, similar content to support our channel, subscribe, like, and just uh, tick that bell uh, notification thing. Otherwise, uh, let's just um, start with it. All right. So I think just to start is to what what we can look at first we can just look at the scalar right so a scalar just has something like magnitude so don't be frightened by this word magnitude it just basically means size that's all it means how big whatever it is it, it is what we're talking about so for instance this includes things like time time i mean you don't say go two seconds to the left it doesn't make sense right well you could say it but then it doesn't make sense um uh so we just normally just say whatever time whatever like 10 seconds for instance nothing it's just the size like how many seconds how big are the seconds just 10 seconds uh things like speed as well these are scalars uh so maybe like you're traveling at 100 kilometers per hour um in south africa we use kilometers per hour we don't use miles uh i know overseas is like miles per hour uh, in america i think all right so we use kilometers per hour i mean other things for instance that would be scalars would be something like work work is just work you know uh it is a scale i'm going to show you how work is a scalar you just whatever choose that kind of choose so these are things that are scalars okay uh these quantities are quantities just check the video where we spoke about quantities these are just quantities i keep mentioning new quantity that I didn't I didn't actually talk about in that video. And then otherwise, if you just want to understand what is a quantity, just check out the video. Just check the video that I just did. I uh, it's somewhere a problem to that. So I'm just gonna put it somewhere. I don't know. Whatever you say, just click it uh, if you want to watch that video. All right. So we these are just scalars. It just concerns size. That's it. All right. And then um we have another thing whereby we now call vectors. All right, but actually, before I move to vectors, it, I think it's important. Uh, for instance, mathematically, even a number is a scalar. Just a number, an ordinary number like two, like three, like four, it's a scalar. Even if it doesn't have units, it doesn't have to have unit in order for it to be a scalar. Um, as long as it's a number, uh, I mean, it's, it's a scalar. So in physics, generally, our scalars in physics will be talking about something that we can measure. Mathematically, our scalars are something that we won't really be measuring. So I'm I'm, I'm going to use this fact, uh, this mathematical definition as well. This is the actual definition of a scalar, just something with uh, just a number with the particular size, of course. Okay, so that's what we have. And then in terms of vectors, now the question is, what's the difference between the two? Uh, when we talk about vectors, Vectors, you still have the size, which is the magnitude. So whenever you hear me saying the size, I normally use the word magnitude. Even when I normally ask my student questions, I'll say find the magnitude. Basically, I mean, I'm saying find the size. But in addition to the magnitude, it has direction. Okay, so that's the difference. So just to put the two side by side, 
So distance, for instance, I can travel 100 kilometers. Now, I mean, if you look at the path that I took, which is the actual path that I took, okay? I don't know. I don't know the direction. I mean, here I went up a bit and then turned towards horizontal a bit. And then I went down and then I continued and then went up and then. So I basically, I don't have direction here. All right. So whereas, for instance, if I am talking about displacement, it would be from this point, maybe to this point. So I started here and I went in that direction. So there's a clear direction. It's a straight line. So this is a vector. This one is a scalar because there is no direction here. I'm just concerned about the size. You find that maybe I still travel 100 kilometers here, but it's a straight line. I mean, it has some direction. So for instance, if I was to say it's just horizontal like this, and I said I went 100 kilometers, it would be 100 kilometers to the right. Okay, hopefully you can see this 100 kilometers. Let me bring it up because I did cut the screen somewhere. All right, so this is 100 meters, uh, kilometers to the right. So this is a vector. This is the size. How big is the distance? This is the size. All right, what is the direction? This is the direction here. Okay, so basically that's what we, that's what we mean when we talk about a vector. So in physics quantities that are vectors, there will be others. I won't mention all of them. So, but just to give you examples, things like velocity is a vector. So whenever you talk about velocity, you must tell us how many meters per second in what direction. Things like uh, the force is a vector. Okay, things like a uh, magnetic field. All right, magnetic field is also um, something that is um, a vector. So there, there are many things that are vectors. I mean, acceleration is a vector as well. Okay, so you do have a number of quantities. You'll see as we just proceed and then I touch on other topics because my plan this year is to try and give you the full chapters and then maybe, I don't know, maybe next year and then I can just start doing problems, just interesting problems on any chapter knowing that you have a background. So this year I'll be focusing on just giving you all the chapters so that at least you have some background. All right, so um, how do we represent this vector? Now, this is very important. So what you want to do is you must always have something that we call a reference frame. Okay. Now, a reference frame, I need to know what is what, basically. All right. So generally, what is going to happen, I'm generally going to say this is the X. So anything that points in this direction, I'm going to say is positive X. I'm going to say it's negative X. I'm going to say this is Y. And then I'm going to say this is negative Y. So there's a Cartesian plane. All right. So you generally want to um, portray your vectors in terms of those directions. So let me say, for instance, I have a vector. So normally when you write a vector, you say A, let's call this vector vector A. OK. And then to show that it's a vector, it's going to have something like this. So this this arrow, some some books use the arrow like that. Some I prefer to just use that. OK. So this just means whatever it is I'm talking about is a vector and I'm calling that vector A, all right? Um, if I just want to talk about the magnitude of A, which is the size of A, I'll just write A. So when I'm writing it like this, I'm actually saying I'm just uh, referring to the magnitude. And then if I'm writing it like this, I'm actually referring to the vector. Okay, so that's the difference between the two, all right? So let me say, for instance, I draw a vector. There's my vector. And my vector has a certain size. And let me say that size is four, new, four units. So it's four units long, meaning that it's whatever the units. I, I don't know the units, but it's four units long. So this is its magnitude. All right. But in this vector is facing towards the right. OK. So you could say vector A is four units. This is how big it is. Right. And then you can say, then you can just say, uh, and then to the right. So you could say like that. I mean, you're saying it's four units. Sorry, you must put units here. So it's four units. You must put units somewhere here. Maybe let me just do it. Uh, all right. So you could say it's four units and then comma to the right. So that's not a problem. That's fine. You could also say it is four units. 
and then maybe say to the east uh, is that east yeah i think that's east or you could say it's four units in the positive x direction positive x axis so x direction so this is this is how you could represent this vector all right so what i normally prefer to do and which is the way that i'm going to the notation that i'm going to use i normally prefer to actually use something that we call unit vectors all right so what is a unit vector a unit vector is the vector but then it's a vector with a magnitude of one and it's facing in the either the horizontal or the vertical direction all right so this one would be this vector from here to here would be a unit vector in the x direction so to show that it's a unit vector i normally put this right here so this is positive y direction so this is negative x direction negative y direction so how i'll write this is i'll say that vector a is actually equals to four units whatever unit is in the positive x direction all right so we'll, we'll be using this convention uh, a, lot, a lot if i just wanted to specify the magnitude of a i could say just say a is equals to four units so sometimes you'll get questions whereby they draw a vector and they just say a is that so what they are what they are telling you is that this vector a is four units and is pointing in that direction so it's still a vector so because they gave you the they gave you the magnitude and they gave you the direction so this is basically how you can actually um write vectors okay so we can do a couple of things you can perform a couple of operations on vectors all right so one of the operations on vector we can multiply it with a scalar all right so we can multiply a vector with a scalar um let's see uh hopefully this thing is up there all right so we can multiply a vector with a scalar all right so let me say for instance i have a vector a and this vector a is is five in the x direction okay so this is vector a all right i can find vector this is what vector a is so if i was to draw this vector it would just be maybe this vector a vector of this size all right so this is just vector a i could find vector b all right and i tell you that vector b is such that it is two times vector a so what i have done is i have just multiplied this vector with a scalar so this two is a scalar all right so this two is actually a scalar so what i've done is i've just multiplied this vector with this scalar basically that's what i've done all right so what does scalar actually does effectively is it basically increases this this the size of this so if i was to break it down this would be two times and then let's open the bracket where i see a i will put this where i see a because i'm saying a is equals to that i'll put that which is five x like that so you can see this is two times five so which is ten in the x direction all right so you can see now the new the vector b instead of it being five five units longer it is actually 10 which means that it just doubled the size so it didn't change the direction it's still facing in the same direction it doesn't change it it does it doesn't change the it only changed the magnitude all right so basically for us to draw it to start here this vector b will be this vector up to here but i double it so it is double the size and this vector will be vector b so this is good and this is true if i'm multiplying with a positive scalar so with the positive scalar i'm only changing the magnitude what happens if i multiply with a negative scalar all right we take the same example same example of vector a let's go back to the right pen we still have vector a which is 5x let's draw it there how this is how long it is let's call it vector a let's go back let me let's, let's pick a blue one now now vector b instead of it being two let me make it minus two minus two vector a so this is still allowed this is still a scalar this is just a number all right so let's see what does the negative scalar do to this vector all right what a negative scalar does to this vector is 
let's let's substitute it what a negative it does is i have negative 2 open bracket i'll put 5 x and then i have negative 10 x so you can see that the size how big my vector is is 10 units instead of 5 units my vector p but and it's still in the x direction but in the negative x direction you could write it like this as well you could say the magnitude is 10 and then this is in the negative x direction remember my cartesian plane is this is negative x direction and then this is positive x direction all right so you could actually write it like this as well all right so you'll see me doing this a lot whereby i write it like this sometimes i'll write it like this this is the same thing all right so if i was to draw it it will start here but it's facing in the negative x direction so it will be two times so it will be very long maybe it goes up to somewhere here and this is how vector p looks like all right so this is the effect of multiplying with a positive scalar and the effect of multiplying with a negative scalar all right so that's just one that's one operation the how multiplying it by scalar what happens if i actually um what happens if i add the two vectors so let's just start with the simple cases and we'll just add the simple cases subtract the simple cases all right so let's start with the simple case so let me say i have vector a there's vector a and vector a is actually um four units all right let's just say four i'm lazy to write units and then i have vector b and vector b is in the same direction so this is the original vector b and maybe let me just say vector b um let me not put the head vector b is equals to um let's just say eight whatever units whatever let's just call it eight all right i mean just say units put units newton if you want whatever unit you want to put is fine all right so if i perform an operation whereby i want vector c but c is such that it is the sum of a plus this plus b so I'm, i have to add these two vectors all right so how will these two vectors c look like all right so you can see that both of them are actually facing in the x direction all right so i can actually just add them all right so this is just going to be four in the x direction this is going to be eight in the x direction and so for that this is just going to be 12 and the direction is the same i mean it's a common factor all right some of you maybe who maybe may be lost you can do it like that all right if you take out x if i open a bracket since x is in both it's a factor for both of them i take it out what am I left with? If I take this x out, I take this x out, I'm left with 4 plus 8, and then this becomes 12x. So you could do it like that as well. All right. Okay, so the vector c, which is the sum of this vector, is actually going to be that. So I can actually add vectors. Now, these are called collinear vectors, which means that these are vectors that are in the same direction. Now, someone may be wondering, but they are not in the same plane. Now the nice thing about vectors is that you can you can move them. So for instance, I could draw vector a. There's vector a like this. Then what I could do is I could take this vector, move it, and put it somewhere here if I want. And then there's my vector b. So you could move as long as you don't change its direction and its magnitude, you haven't changed the vector. This is vector b. And this is vector A. And you can see, for instance, when I add the two vectors, what you are effectively doing is you're saying vector A, which is this. So you always start from the tail of the first vector, which is A, to the head of the final vector, which is B. So that's what C is going to be. So it's going to start from the tail of A, go all the way until the head of B. And that's how vector C looks like. So if you are asked to draw vector C, this is how it will look like. You could take it and draw it here if you want. I mean, you could draw it on top of this. Just to illustrate, I, I chose to draw it below just to show that it's going to match that side, the sum of that. All right? So, I mean, this is I'm adding core linear, meaning that they are in the same 
the same plane. And when they are calling, it doesn't matter what direction it is. I mean, you could just add them. It doesn't matter. I mean, even if I have like vector A like this, and I have vector B like this, it doesn't matter as long as the direction is the same, meaning that as long as they are facing in the same direction, as long as this angle here, theta, and this angle here, theta, are the same. If these two angles are the same, if this is theta and this is theta, I mean that they are in the same direction, I can add them. It's just going to be vector A. It's just going to be vector A and it's going to be plus vector B. So whatever vector C, which is the sum of these two vectors, is just going to be like that in the same direction. So I can just add them. I don't have to, even though I wouldn't write them um, the same way of X and Y, I'll tell you how to add them when they are like this. Uh, but they just basically increase the magnitude. If this was, if this was, um, if this was four and this was eight, this vector C here is just going to be twelve, which is eight plus four. But the direction is going to be different. So your vector C is going to be written like it is twelve, the magnitude, whatever units. But the direction is going to whatever theta is. Whatever your angle is, if it's 30 degrees, you say 30 degrees, whatever, whatever. I'll tell you now how to actually uh, work when they are like this, when they are not in the X or the Y. All right. So that's the thing um, with adding collinear vectors because they are in the same line. Uh, this is, I've drawn it here, that you can move them and have them in the same line. So that's why we say they are collinear. All right. So that is that. Okay, so what about if I'm adding or subtracting, All right? So what happens if I subtract? Okay, so let me say I have the same vector, vector A, and vector A is four units, and then I still have the same vector, vector B, and vector B is actually eight units. So you can see I'm not putting the, the, the arrow on top because I'm just looking at the magnitude of these two, all right? And the directions, you can get them from the drawing. So you could represent vectors like that. So for instance, if I want C, the vector C, but now the vector C is such that it is vector A minus vector B. All right. So now what happens? Okay. So what happens here is you could just do it. I mean, you could just say this is 4X minus 8X. Right. In the X direction. And this is going to be minus 4 in the x direction. All right. So that's how your vector is going to be, which is going to be 4 in the minus x direction, basically. All right. But let's see. Can, could we determine this with a sketch? I mean, this is how I could determine the vector C mathematically. But could I actually determine this with a sketch? So let's, let's look at it. So if you look at this vector C, which is going to be equals to A minus B, this is the same as vector A plus, and then I open bracket, and then I say minus B. So I'm still adding two vectors because I'm adding them. There's a plus sign. Remember, the positive multiplied by negative is going to be negative. So I haven't broken any mathematics rules here. Okay. So this is the same thing. And I already know how to add vectors. Okay. But now here's the issue. The vector that I'm adding now here, I'm no longer adding A plus B, I am adding A minus B. So if this is B and B is facing that way, minus B is going to be facing the other way. It's going to be the same magnitude, but it's going to be facing the other way. This is minus B. This is how minus B looks like. So when I add the two vectors, vector A and vector minus B, I'm adding those two now. I'm adding vector A and vector minus B. When I add those two, all right, so I have to start with the first one. The first one is A, so A is going that way. There's A, A is going that way. There's vector A, so I agree. But what about vector B? Well, vector B is going from the head of the from the head of the first vector. You start drawing there, but it's going in that direction. It's going in that direction, so it is going in that direction. So it is eight times. This is eight, so it's twice that. 
so vector p is going like that all right so you can already see here that the vector c is just going to be this because this part it's plus minus so it's going to cancel this part is going to cancel because this one is just plus it's four minus four and i'm only left with this four so vector c is just going to be this one and it's going to be minus this vector c so this is how graphically you could actually determine it i mean if you were to if you were to draw them on top of each other you would actually draw vector b which is this one you could draw it here from the from the head you draw it you draw it you draw it you can see this is four again but then you continue and then you end up here so you can see that this part is cancelling each other all right so you are only left with that so that is why you it is actually four in the negative direction so vector c is just four in the negative direction the magnitude is four units and then the direction is negative all right so this is how you can actually add this is how you can actually subtract vectors all right so now the issue becomes this is all good and well when something is vertical and something is horizontal i mean you could do the same thing i mean if it's vertical you could do the same thing i mean it does it's not it's not a big problem you could have vector a like this and you could have vector b like that it's just gonna be the same thing just assume that they are going both of them they are facing up it's just gonna be it's just going to work work it out the same way you worked out horizontal the only difference is that instead of you're going to have a is 4y now and then maybe b is going to be 8y so instead of x is y that's the only difference okay but the mathematics works out the same way okay now the question is what happens if i have an angle that's where things start becoming a little bit tricky all right so let me say for instance i have a vector and this vector is at an angle and if i if 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 i put the angle here maybe it's just this angle theta here all right so now how do i work with such vectors so the nice thing with these vectors is that you could actually you start with a simple case you could actually break it down into components so if i call this vector a all right so this vector from here to here i call it a and it is in the direction of theta if you carefully look at this vector this vector is made up of two vectors in the x and the y all right i could draw a line from the tail of the vector now i want to somehow end up at the head so since the head is somewhere towards the right i must first go this way because i want to get there on the head and then i stop i mean you could draw a line if you want to know where to stop you could draw a line and then i stop here i stop but i haven't reached the head so in order for me to reach the head i must start another line from this head that goes up and then finally i have actually moved from the tail of this vector to the head of this vector all right so i managed to get there as you can see and now this looks very this looks like something that we can work with because you remember in in mathematics there are different types of triangles and one of this nice triangle that we like to work with is called a right angle triangle and it's called a right angle triangle because this side here is 90 degrees the angle is 90 degrees so you could have theta somewhere here and how this triangle actually works in maths is that this is r and then this is y and then this is x and we know a couple of things with this for instance we can actually find r by say using pythagoras which is x r, r squared is x squared plus y squared we could also find the angle i mean we could for instance say sine of theta if we want is going to be equals to y over r we could say cos of theta is going to be equals to x, which is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So this is the opposite over the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is the longest side. This is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. 
all right? Then you could also use tan of theta. Tan of theta is going to be y, which is the opposite over the adjacent, which is over x. Now, this is dependent on, on, on theta, where theta is. How do I know that something is opposite? If you look at theta, if I draw the line like this, this is opposite of theta. This y is opposite of theta. And it is just next to, it is just next to, like next door adjacent to x. Right? If, for instance, I had another angle here, and let's call this angle phi, like this, then it will be different. For instance, sine of phi would be the opposite. What is the opposite of that angle? The opposite of this angle is actually this x side. So this is going to be x over the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse doesn't change. It's still along a side. And then cos of phi is going to be y, which is the adjacent, because now the one that is next to the side that is next to the angle is y. And then over r. And then 10 is going to be opposite, which is x over y. So it depends where your angle is. So don't just cram this theta thing. It, you have to be careful. You have to check where your angle is. All right. But when it's like this, uh, going back to this example here, I can actually see that these two here, where they meet, they actually make 90 degrees. So basically, this configuration here looks exactly like this configuration here. And I can call this the x component because it's in the x direction. I mean, it's horizontal. And I can call this the y component of A. So this is the x, the x component of A. This is the y component of A, meaning that it's part of A, but going up. And this one is part of A, but going to the x direction, which is the right. Okay, so both of them, when I combine them, they make up A. And you'll find that, according to vectors, if you think about it, when I'm adding, when I'm drawing them like this, I started the tail to the head and then join the second vector from here to here. It means that actually A is equals to the X component plus the Y component. So if I add these two vectors, they will give me A. So A basically is the, is the sum of these two vectors. So some people will say it is the resultant vector. So A is the resultant vector of AX plus YX, the resultant vector being the sum of all the vectors. Okay? All right, but don't worry, we're just going to do examples of the resultant. Right? If I wanted um, to find out the magnitude of this thing, I could find the magnitude of A, it will be given by the magnitude of AX squared plus the magnitude of AY squared over the square root. Sorry, I don't have to put this on top. Sorry about that, my mistake. All right, so just the magnitude. If I wanted to find the direction of theta, you will always say 10 of theta, it's always going to be ay over ax. And you have to use the positive values. So some of you might not have done absolute values, but you're just making this number positive. All right, it's a magnitude. That's basically what's happening. All right, now these equations are very important. We're going to do an example now, and it's just some, some example that we can use. But this equation is very important, like cram it. If you have to cram it, cram it. All right. But it's way better to just understand it. But you have to actually understand. Uh, you have to know this equation and know how to apply this equation. All right. And um, once I made this, maybe let's just I'll just illustrate that when I'm doing the example. So let's just give you an example of what I'm talking about. Say for instance, I have a vector. Let's call this vector v1. I have a vector that goes on a horizontal like this. Let's call it v v1. And let's say this vector is four units. Then I have a second vector, which is vector v, v2. Let's call this vector v2. And let's say that this vector v2 is, is 6.5 units. Five units like that. I don't know why I'm doing it like that. This is unit type, units. 
Okay. Now maybe the question says uh, says find the sum of these two vectors. So I want the sum, and I'll call the sum v. So I want this the vector v, which is going to be v1 plus v2. So let's draw it. Okay. So we said v1 looks like that. So this is v1. Said v1 looks like that. And we said that v2 looks like that. So there's v2. V2 looks like that. This is vector 2. Okay, so this is now. I mean, for me to draw my resultant vector, it will have to start from the first vector. Which, how do I know the first vector? Because of the equation. So it has to start from v1. There's v1. And then it has to go all the way to the head, which is this head. Right? So from the, the tail of the first vector to the head of the second vector. And voila, this is going to be the vector v that I'm actually looking for, which is going to be this. And the angle, I'll say this is theta. And it looks like actually, since this is horizontal, this is vertical, this makes 90 degrees with each other. Yeah. And this is something that I actually recognize. And remember what I said? I said, well, I said v1 is four units. I'm not going to put units. And then I said v2, the magnitude is 6.5 units. So I can work with this. All right. Now, if you want to write it, uh, this is how you could write it. V1 is just going to be four units in the x direction because it's going in the x direction. So I could put a Cartesian plane here. So you could draw Cartesian planes anywhere. If I put a Cartesian plane here, you can see that it is in the x direction. And this one is in the y direction, this one. I mean, if you want, you could draw another Cartesian plane here. You'll see that it's going up if you want. So you could draw Cartesian planes if you want just to track them. All right. So that's fine. This is that. And then this is 6.5y. Okay. So this is fine. Now, when you actually have written your, your vector like this, basically what you have done is you have written your vector in, in component form. So if they for, say, for instance, uh, find the sum and leave your answer in component form. This is what they want you to do. All right. Okay. So they want you to actually find it and uh, write it and then just leave it, just group it into X and Y. So this is the X component of the sum component. And then this is the Y component. All right, so this is the difference between the two. Now, since it's like this, I can use Pythagoras. I mean, if I want this V, I mean, this looks like a hypotenuse. This looks like uh, the adjacent side and the and this side. So I could actually find the magnitude and the direction of this vector. All right, so how I can find the magnitude and direction of this vector is I'll basically say uh, the vector V squared is going to be V1 squared plus V2 squared. So v, which is vector v, if I solve it, is going to be the square root of v1 squared plus v2 squared. Don't take the negative in the square root. Um, again, uh, once I upload my maths uh, course, sometime this week, I'm working on uploading it sometime this week. Um, so I have, I'm doing some quite a number of recordings. Uh, I'm not sleeping. All right. So... Okay, um, so this should assist you once once I have it up. Um, the mass video. All right, so I could do this and then just substitute that. Just say the square root of 4 squared, plus the square root of 6.5 squared. Then you punch your calculator, get your answer. Okay, it turns out the answer is going to be 7.6. Let's just leave it at 7.6 units. Now, if I want, um, the direction which is theta, I want theta, I want this theta, right? Remember I just said it doesn't matter where theta is, just say theta is going to be y, whatever is y. So this is the y which is 6.5 over the x. Maybe let me just do it like this so I don't confuse you. Sometimes I move so fast thinking that everyone, that this is obvious. Um, all right, so... The opposite, the opposite is going to be this one, V2, V2, and then the adjacent is going to be this one, V1. 
all right v2 is 6.5 no and then this one even if it was negative don't put the negative so when you're doing this don't include the negatives i'll show you how you can actually find the direction without actually putting the negatives all right this is over four now if you want to find theta theta this is what you should do on your calculator there's something like this on your calculator and then put the bracket 6.5 over 4 and then you find theta just do it like this and then you just say if you're using the case here you just use shift and then you do and then it's just 6.5 over 4 all right and then afterwards you'll find your theta in degrees and then your theta shape is something like 58.4 degrees all right so let's draw it and let's see how we do it and how do we name it all right so remember your vector v looks like this and you just found out that v is going to be 7.6 units long and the theta you just found that theta is going to be 58.4 degrees now where if i draw a cartesian plane here if i draw a cartesian plane if i draw a cartesian plane here you can see that if i draw a cartesian plane this is the west this is the positive x direction all right this is the positive x and then this is the negative x so you could write it like this you could say vector v is or you could say is 7.6 comma 58 degrees 58.4 degrees above the positive x-axis. All right. Or you could say V is 7.658.4 degrees uh, to the plus x direction. All right. So basically, I know that, okay, so it's basically above that. Could say that. Normally, what I would prefer to say is V is 7.6. I forgot units all. I mean, it's supposed to be units here, units here, units. And then 58.4 degrees, right? And then what you say is in order for me to get here, what I would have to do is I will have to go to the east and then go to the north. All right. So I had to go to east and then afterwards north. All right. North. So I had to go east, north, and then I could combine this. All right. So I went to east first and then north. But now when you write it, you don't say east to north. You say north, north of east. So you say north of east normal how i write this is just north of east so i'll just cut it like that so these are the number of ways you can actually express your final answer all right so let's just do an example whereby um we actually have a situation where i was only given a and they are asking me to find the x component and the y component all right and i'm only given a and then how will i do that so if i'm given the vector let's call it a since i said it's a all right let's this is vector a in actual fact let me not put that let's call it vector a and let's just make it eight units all right eight units i'll just say eight u and let's give it an angle of um, 27 degrees all right then what they're saying is they need me they need me to find the x and the y component how will i go about doing that all right so i need to find out the x component of this vector remember all vectors are made up of x and y even a horizontal vector has an x component the y component this vector if it's like this right let me say this vector was four so if we were to write this vector let's call it b you would say that this vector is four in the x and zero in the y meaning that there's no other vector that goes up up or down in order to make up this vector if i had a vector like this and let's say that this vector is six you would say that this vector is called c it's going to be zero in the x direction because there's no vector in the x direction 
but uh, it is actually six in the y direction. So all vectors are actually, um, maybe you don't see this, all vectors are actually made up of components. It's just that we don't write them. Okay. So if there's an angle, then there's an x and a y. Both the x and the y exist. That's the only difference. Okay. So this one is going to be x, this one, and then this is going to be y. So I'm looking for this a y component, and I'm looking for this a x component. Basically, that's what I want, and then this is going to be 90 degrees. All right, so how will I go about doing such a problem? So now this one, since I have this side, so I could find this one so i know that whatever vector i find is going to be in the x direction and here whatever vector i find is going to be going up so it's in the y direction all right so at least i know that all right so let's see how can i solve such a problem all right so if i want ax i just want the magnitude of ax how can i find ax if you look at the angle ax is adjacent to the angle and remember what i said i said that cos of whatever angle of 27 degrees in this case is going to be adjacent, which is AX over hypotenuse, which is A. And sine of 27 degrees is going to be opposite. There's the opposite side, which is AY over A, which is the hypotenuse. So I could use this fact, right? So if I wanted to solve for AX here, I could solve for AX, I cross multiply. Then AX is going to be equals to A cos of 27 degrees again if you are lost you don't know how i found this um it, it may help you to actually check out my my maths course video all right all right um so this is a cost of 27 degrees all right and then that is basically going to be equals to and then a is eight and then this is cost of 27 degrees and my AX is going to be equals to 7.1 units, so I'll say you. What about my, my, my AY? So you can see from here, my AY, I can find it from sine because sine has an AY in it. So my AY is going to be A sine of 27 degrees. All right, so that's going to be my AY which is 8 sine of 27 degrees, which is going to be, which is going to be 3.6 units, whatever the unit is. All right. So now if I want to write it, I now know the magnitude of AX and I now know the magnitude of AY. So I could write those vectors, these two components, and then I could say, A, let's change the color. Let's just say AX is going to be 7.1 that's how big the vector is going to be what direction is going to be next direction what about a y a y is going to be 3.6 what direction in the y direction sorry not the x in the y direction okay so this is good um this is good let me say for instance i had the same setup but it's not facing in that direction all right how would you express it now something like this if i had the same vector let's call it vector a but then vector a was like this it was 27 degrees now like this and then they say find the x and the y let's look at it the x is still going to go that way i'll have to go that way to get the x all right but to get the y i'll have to go down so now my y is going to be negative so this would be ax and this would be ay so if i tell you that the a is still the same i think it was eight so if i still say it's eight units it's still going to be the same what you're going to do you're going to say if you want ax you're going to use cos if you want this you're going to use sine but the only difference is now your ax is going to be 7.1 in the x direction and your ay is going to be 3.6 but now in the negative y direction or you could write it and say 3.6 in the y direction this is the same thing right so either way it still works out all right so i hope this works i hope this provides you guys clarity 
So now we're just going to add them when they are not, when there's like more than one and they are not in, in the same direction. Um, and then we are also going to add them when they are um, not right angle triangle. So we're just gonna do two cases. Um, and then afterwards, you're going to move to another section on this one. All right. So um, now, what happens if I have vector A? There's vector A. And I'll draw a Cartesian plane here. Because I don't want to write, I don't want to actually write a statement for this question. And let's just say vector A is um, how many units? Let's just say vector A is 40 Newton, right? It's a force. And the, the angle, maybe let's just say it's 31 degrees. Then I have vector B and vector B, maybe let's put it like that. And I'll just make it interesting and put the angle here. All right, okay, maybe because I'm still teaching you, it's fine. I'll just make it simpler. I'll put the angle here, and maybe what I want to do in actual fact is make it like longer like this. Um, but it's got no, it's fine, just make it longer like that. And let's call this vector P, and this vector P is 75 Newton. Um, and the angle of 75 Newton, um, let's make it 36 degrees. Let's say that's around 35, this around 36. Right now, if you if we check it, just just look at forget about vector B, just look at vector A, just draw it. Vector A looks like this. I mean, you can see vector A looks like that, and it has an angle of 31 degrees here. Yeah? So the components are going to look something like this. It's just going to be AX in this direction. And it is going to be AY in that direction. I mean, that's how you can actually break up uh, that one. All right, and that's basically how this vector A looks like. What about vector B? There's vector B, vector B goes like that. This is vector B. So this one, my a, my bx is going that way, so it's negative. So my bx is negative, and my by is going up. All right, again, it's meeting at 90 degrees, even this one at 90 degrees. So this is my by. Okay. So this is good. Um, and then the angle here is 36. And now this is now comes in handy. What we just did comes in handy because I could do that now. What I could do is I could actually find out what are these lengths. So for instance, I could find Bx. I could say the magnitude of Bx is going to be cos is going to be B, the hypotenuse, and then cos is adjacent, so cos of 36 degrees. And B, I said it is 75 cos of 36 degrees and this is going to be my bx so the magnitude of bx is going to be 75 cos of 36 degrees which is 60.7 newton right i could find my by so my by is going to be b Sine because it's opposite. I mean, it's opposite. By is opposite that, so I'm going to use sine 36 degrees, and basically, which becomes 75 sine of 36 degrees, and that becomes 44 Newton. All right. So now I have Bx and then I have Py. Let's find. Let's use another color. Let's find Ax. Ax is going to be, Ax is adjacent, so I'm going to use cos, it's going to be A cos of 31 degrees, which is going to be, I think I said this is 40, um, 31 degrees, I think so. Cos 31 degrees, this is going to be 34. 
0.3 newton and then my a y is just going to be a I actually I nearly, I nearly skipped um right 31 degrees which is going to be 40 sine 31 degrees and that is 20 so my a y is going to be 20.6 newton all right so this is fine this is good um so now since i have it like this so let me just summarize this let me just verify oh yeah they're still here so it's 75 and 40 so that's fine so i'm correct there so what i'm going to do i'm just going to verify remember i want the sum so the question is going to be find the resultant vector okay so you could always do this i mean even if before you even read the question when you get it when you get when you get when you get it into that form you read a statement you reduce it to that form just start doing this and that is going to be easy afterwards all right so they want the the sum vector so let's call that vector resultant r which is going to be vector a plus vector b now you need to follow my mathematics very carefully all right now remember what a is so i'm going to write everything here my ax is 34.4 my ay is 20.6 my bx is 60.7 my by is 44. right remember that now if you check this right this vector a can be broken into ax and ay remember i said ax and ay ax and ay are the sum they actually when you add these two vectors you get a so when i add ax and ay i get a so i can close the bracket so this ax plus ay give me a and then when I add BX and BY, I get B. All right, I get the vector B. Then I can group all the X's and all the Y's. So AX plus BX is going to be grouped together. And then say plus. And then say BAAY, sorry. Plus BY. So when it's like this, you're just putting plus. You don't care about the direction. I'm going to tell you when I'm going to put directions now. Now, all right. So now let's put the directions. If you look at vector A, let's go back to the image you now. Vector A is in the positive direction, and vector A Y is in the positive. But if you look at Px is in a negative and By is in a positive. So which means that if you want, you can actually write these ones like this. You could actually write this one. Ax is positive in the x direction. So I could erase that. So I could erase all of this. Could erase this. Could erase that. So what I could do is this one is going to be in the positive x direction. This one is going to be in positive y direction. This one is going to be in the negative x direction. And this one is going to be in positive y direction. Okay. So you could write these vectors like that. So now you could then come to this equation and break it down further and say, where I see ax, I'm going to put 34.4 in the x direction. And then this one is going to be 60.7, but in the negative x direction. Put the brackets, which is these brackets, because this is just ax, and then this is bx. And then you just say um, another bracket for this one. Ay is going to be 20.6 in the y, and then this one is going to be plus 44 in the y. All right, and then <clears throat> after doing that, everything is in the x, everything is in the y. So this becomes 
Okay, so this is going to be 94, 94.1, 95.1, sorry, not 94. Uh, it's going to be 95.1 in the X direction. Oh, sorry, 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 I'm making a mistake. All right, so this one, what you're going to do is, if you take out the negative here, I mean, this just becomes 34. 0.4 minus 60.7 everything is in the x direction so this minus here I, I multiplied this positive with this minus and then it became like this and then i factored out i factored out x and then plus and then this is 20.6 plus 44 and then this is going to be y all right so when you do this, this is going to be negative. This is going to be negative 20 something, I think. Yeah, 20 something. Okay, it should be something like 26.3, I think. Uh, in the x direction. And then this one is going to be 40, 60... 60 plus 64.6 in the y. All right, so this is my vector r. So this is just for me to get to what is going to be resultant vector. I mean, if I was to draw this vector r, this is how it would look like. All right, it will look like it's minus 26 on the x, so it's minus 26 on the x. And then I have to go 64.6 upwards. So and I draw another one. So I have to go whatever, 64. Now the resultant vector R is going to look from the tail of the first vector to the head of that. And then there it is. So it looks like that. So basically, this is the X component. Uh, let me use a different color. This is basically the X component. You could call it Rx. This is the Y component. So if they said to you, leave it in component form, you will leave it like this. If they say, find the resultant vector and leave your answer in vector component form, you can, you should just leave it here. All right. So this would be vector R, and then this would be Rx, and then this would be Ry. Basically, that's how it is. Then your theta is going to be somewhere here. All right. So if they say, however, find the magnitude and the direction, then you have to find the magnitude. So you'll have to say the magnitude of R is going to be the square root of whatever it is that you have on the X, which is 26.3 squared. Doesn't matter whether you put a negative or not, because you're squaring it, it's going, it's going to be positive anyway. So this is 64.6 squared, and you could find the magnitude of that. <coughs> This is this becomes sixty nine point seven. Uh, I think it said newtons. I think we're working on newtons. All right. So this is that. It's always positive. It's always positive. The magnitude is, is the size. It's always positive. The size. If you want the direction of this, uh, I don't want to close this. So let me just move it. <coughs> if you want the direction of this, let me use a different color. So I'm just going to say 10 of whatever it is, I'll call it theta. Whatever it is on the Y, I'll put it like that, 64.6, whatever is on the X. Now, here is negative, but I ignore the negative. I just put the 26.3. You always ignore the negative. You don't care whether it's positive or negative. All right? So, and then I can find theta. I've already shown you how to find theta. You use the, the, arc, the arc 10 of that. Okay, so this becomes 67.8, actually 67.9 degrees. Now the question is, okay, if I was to write this, then I would say R is 69.7 Newton, 67.9 degrees, what of what? Now let's look at it, this is theta. So in order for me to move from the tail to get to the head, I have to go to the west and then north, and then I get the vector. So I went west, and then I went north afterwards, right? To get this theta here, just to get this theta here, which is like that. 
So when I write it, I'm not going to say I went from west to north. I'm going to say north of west. So I'm going to say north of west. You could also say above the negative x-axis. Right? You could say it's 67.9 degrees above the negative x-axis. Because if you draw a negative x-axis here, if you draw an axis here, you can see that it's going to be on the negative. This is the positive, this is the negative. So it's above this negative x-axis. So you could also say that as well. So it's fine. Generally, as lecturers and teachers at high, in high school, uh, they are not going to punish you, I think, unless they, they specify maybe a certain teacher or lecturer prefers a certain... Generally, university, we don't care much about... Um, as long as we and as long as we happy that we feel you know what you're talking about or you understand what you're talking about, we don't care much about the details whether you use positive or not of worse. At high school, they may be specific and strict, so it just depends. So you have to be careful. I don't care because I teach at university. But if someone um maybe teaches at high school, they want you to use the north of west because they want you to understand how to use the north of west and the south of. They may restrict you, so you have to be careful. And just make sure that you, you follow whatever instructions that your teacher um, gives you. All right. So now we're going to look at sort of the second last section. Um, yeah, yeah. We still have two more things to look uh, to actually discuss after this. All right. So the second last one, what it says is a situation whereby what happens if the vectors are not at right angle triangles? Let me say, for instance, you have a vector like this, and let's call it vector A, and you are adding it with a vector like that, so you don't have, and maybe they say maybe like vector B, all right? And maybe they give you an angle theta here, all right? So your triangle, your right, like, for instance, when you add here and then maybe they restrict you and they say you don't have to use the vector component form and maybe they say use a certain rule that I'm going to state now. There are two rules that you can use. For instance, you could rearrange this into these triangles. You could say this is A. I'm going to make an example with this one. This is A. And then this is B. And then you could say this is C. So you have a, a you, you basically have a triangle that is not a right angle triangle. Basically, that's what you have. So if I know this angle here, so if this angle is theta, if this angle is theta, let me call this angle phi. All right, in actual fact, let me do it like this. Okay, so I'll just call this angle C, small letter C. I will call this angle just opposite this side of B. I'll call it B, small letter B. This one, which is just like here, I'll call it A like this. These are angles, okay? These are angles. All right, so that's what I'm calling these angles. I could use something that we call a cosine rule, which says C squared is equals to A squared plus b squared minus 2ac cos of whatever the angle of whatever side I'm looking for. So the opposite angle to the side that I'm looking for is this c, so I'm going to say c here, cos of c. Let me just put it in brackets so that you can see that it's cos of c. So for instance, if I had if I had the angle a, you could use it. For instance, for a, you could say a squared going to be equals to b squared plus c squared minus 2 bc cos of, let me say you had this angle a, so you could actually see that this cos of a. If you wanted b, you could say b squared is a squared plus c squared minus 2 ac. Uh, it's supposed to be 2ab, sorry. Uh, and then cos of. Now I want the b one, so it's cos of b. All right, so this is how basically you could use it. So 
or normally what you do is you use the cosine rule if I know the other two sides. I don't know one side. I know the size of the other two sides and I know the angle between those two sides. Right? So for instance, if you look at A and B, you, let me say you know the angle C and you know what, what is A, what is B. You just don't know what is C. Then you use the cosine rule. So this is called the cosine rule. Okay, so you could also use a sine rule. For instance, a sine rule uh, basically says that sine of C over C is going to be equal to sine of B over B, which is going to be equal to sine of A. I don't know why I started with C, strange, over A, All right? And you could do vice versa, like you could, you could like, have reciprocals of it basically where you have um, C over sine of C um, is equals to B over sine of B which is equals to A over sine of A you could you could you could have a situation like that it's, it's not a big problem as well all right so so that's a nice thing um, that's a nice rule that you could use. Normally, this becomes handy when you are told to actually apply a parallelogram method. So let me just show you what a parallelogram method is. All right. So let me say, for instance, you have a vector. There is a vector. Let's call it A to keep everything consistent. And let's call it B. Now, a parallelogram method says you draw this A vector is basically you draw it from this time from this side so let's make it red so you draw a vector that is exactly the same size as a and is parallel to a so that becomes vector a so basically draw this a vector here and then you just basically join the vector that you join i know i didn't draw, I did not draw everything up to scale is going to be the vector b so you can see it is parallel to b all right it's, it's parallel to this one, okay? They are, not the, they, are not this, they are the same size and they are also parallel. They are the same direction and the same size. So they are parallel to one another. And then the resultant vector is basically going to be a vector from here. Vector from here up to here. Let's call that vector C. So if you were to reduce your, your triangle, it starts to look more or less the same way as we had that one. Let me use different color. So reduce it to, it has A, there's A, which is this side. And then let's draw B. And then there's B, which is this side. And then let's draw C, and then let's C, which is that side. So you can see now I can actually use the cosine rule because maybe I know this angle, I know that angle, and I know that angle. This is C, maybe this is B because it's opposite. This one is A. All right, so I could use the sine rule and the cosine rule. So generally, this is how you could actually reduce this and use the sine rule and the cosine rule. All right, so when they say use a parallelogram method, Basically, you are going to calculate them using a cosine and a sine rule. Sometimes they will say use a cosine and a sine rule. Okay, so that's the difference between the two. Okay, so let's just quickly do an example on this one. One example I think should be fine. Um, so it's just an example whereby, let's say you have a vector. Uh, let's just say you have a vector. And let's call this vector A. And it is 50 Newton. And the angle between the two vectors is 39 degrees. And then you have these vectors here. And let's call this vector P. And this vector P is going to be equal to 60 Newton. All right. 
And then you are asked to actually find the resultant vector using the sine rule or cosine rule, or they say using the pyrogram method. Either way, you're going to end up with the same thing. So what you could do is you're going to have vector A, draw vector A. Vector A is simple because it's like that. So which is 50. I mean, this, this could be complicated. Actually, since I'm just drawing it, let me not put the magnitudes. And then draw vector B. But now, instead of drawing vector B at the tail of A, I'm going to draw vector B at the head of A. And if I draw it at the head of A, it looks something like this. So if I have to maintain the same different, the same, the same, um, the same um, direction, then this side here, the angle from the horizontal to vector B must be 39. This angle here. And if that is the case, look at where, where is my vector C from the first vector to the final vector. That is going to be my vector C. All right. And then this one is going to be my vector B. All right. Now I do have an angle for vector C. I can find it because from here to here is going to be 180. So since I know 39, this angle here, let's call it angle alpha. So I could find this angle alpha. I could say this angle alpha is just going to be 180 degrees minus 39 degrees. All right. So this is going to be 59 and then 50, 150 minus 9 is going to be 141 degrees. So this angle here is going to be 141 degrees. So now I can erase it and then write it as 141 degrees. All right, so this is fine. So now I can use my sine and cosine rule to find the direction of this. I mean, the direction of this would be theta. So I'll need to find theta, which is the direction of C, vector C. I mean, vector C is going to look like that. And then it's going to have theta here. That's how vector C is going to look like. So I'll have to find out what the angle theta is going to be. And then I'll have to find this. This could be complicated more than this. I just chose to simplify it. Okay, I just chose to simplify it, so this is fine. All right, so if I want C is very simple, I'll just say C squared is A squared plus B squared minus 2AC cos of whatever angle, 141 degrees, which was alpha. And then you just basically substitute, and then you say C is going to be equals to, put a square root of everything. What is A? I think it says 50 squared plus 60 squared um, plus 60 squared minus 2, 50, 60, and then cos of 141 degrees. All right, so this is that. <coughs> and then after that, it's going to be equals to, all right, so. I get 103.7 Newton. That's basically what my C is. If I want this theta, I could use the cos to get the theta because now I know what C is. Like you could write it, say C is 103.7. So you could use that, but I'm going to use sine. I just think it's nicer if I use sine so that you have experience with sine. So I'm going to find this with sine. So this theta is opposite the side of B. Right, it's sort of opposite the side of B, so which means that B sine of theta is going to be since I know this side and I know this angle, I'm going to use that, which is C sine of C. I thought I called it alpha before. All right, so let's let's just do that. B is sixty. All right, before that, let me just solve for theta. So sine of theta is going to be multiply this by this, which is B sine of that divided by C. So this is going to come this side, so C. So B is going to be 60 sine of 141 degrees divided by C, which is 103.7. And then you find out what is theta. All right. So 
my sine of theta is 0 0.36 all right so which means that theta is going to be when i have something like this sine of 0 0.36 and which is going to be 21.1 degrees all right so i think this is good this is it guys um and then now i'm just going to move on and then actually talk about something else as well all right so now we are aware of a case whereby um we can add vectors that are collinear in the same line whether it's vertical or horizontal or it's at an angle as long as they're in the same line we can add them basically these are vectors that are parallel to one another we can add them okay uh, they could be parallel facing in one direction they could be parallel but facing in opposite direction that's fine then we can also add vectors that are perpendicular to one another we can uh, also subtract vectors that are collinear and then we can also add vectors that are not perpendicular to one another using two methods we can basically use the vector component method and we can also use the sine and cosine rule now the issue now or the concept that i want us to actually look at is how do we subtract all right so remember let me say for instance i have a vector let's just call it let's just have it facing that way let's just say this is vector a and vector a is 40 newton and then we're going to have vector b and vector b is 60 newton that's the magnitude of vector b we're going to use newtons they're easy to write than units all right now one thing that i want you guys to note is well i can subtract these two vectors well what happens if i want vector a minus vector b all right so vector a minus vector b is going to be um vector a is 40 newtons in the x direction and then minus is this minus maybe let me write it here is 40 newtons it's 40 in the x direction and there's the minus which is this minus and then b let me open the bracket is 60 in the x direction as well all right so i get that this is minus uh, 20 um, newton okay this is just basically 20 newton in the x direction all right so basically you can write it like that that's fine all right so if you were to draw this you would say basically vector a and then minus vector b so there's your vector b so i've, I've already explained this so this would be vector a and then this would be vector b and then this is basically the 20 that you get all right okay so that's sort of one now how about if i want actually now b minus a instead of a minus b i want b minus a so this one becomes 60 in the x direction minus 40 in the x direction all right that's basically it and then basic and then this one becomes 20 newtons in the x direction so if you look at the two a minus b is minus 20 and b minus a is plus 20 so the magnitudes are the same but the directions are, are different i mean minus 20 is vector pointing that way plus 20 is a vector pointing that way the magnitude the size of the vectors is equal but the directions are not the same so basically what it means therefore is that we can actually say vector a minus vector b is the same as a minus of vector b minus vector a that's basically what you can actually say and this sometimes is very important when you actually to actually understand and note this rule here so for, for for when it's a plus sign basically it doesn't matter the order you can basically exchange the order so that's fine all right so now um how do we add them if they are paper how do we subtract vectors that are perpendicular to one another that's basically what you want to look at now we want to subtract vectors that are perpendicular to one another so i have vector a let me just have vector a and the vector a is going to be 40 newtons and is in the x direction then let me have vector b and vector b is in the y direction all right so vector b is going to be 60 newtons in the y direction this one is 40 newton in the x direction all right so basically that's what i want to find out as to how will that work out how can i subtract i still want a situation if i am looking for vector c such that vector c is a minus b that's basically what i want all right so how do i subtract this now let's just draw it first the first vector is a so first vector a a is going that way all right actually let me draw it up there uh you'll see why 
So I have vector A, A is where it is. Now trade does vector A, so I'm happy with vector A. Now what about B? Now let's look at B. So what you're doing, remember I said when you're doing this, is the same as you are adding vectors. It's just the other vector that you are adding is negative. So you want a negative B. So B, positive B looks like this. So vector when it's positive looks like that. Now what about negative vector B? Negative vector B is the same size but then it's pointing downwards, so this is negative p. So it, negative changes the direction, remember that all the time. So which means that b is going to be a vector that is going to be from here, and then to be going downwards. So that's basically what vector p is. Okay, so which means that my resultant vector that I'm looking for, which is this vector c, the vector c, and this is very important, for instance, when you are, when you are doing um, acceleration, um, I'm going to use this fact when you do acceleration. I'm going to use this fact when you when you have like a change in, in momentum, things like that. This is going to be very important. So that's why I'm teaching these concepts here, because from now on going forward, we're going to be applying a lot of these concepts. And we'll be ex I'll be expecting that you now understand this. All right. So my theta is going to be here. And there's my vector C that I'm looking for. All right. So this is how it look like in configurations. And now we know how to work with this. I mean, we've been working with this. So for instance, if I want the magnitude of C, it's just going to be the square root of the X, which is this 40, the X, which is that 40 squared, plus this Y, which is going to be 60 squared. And then I'm just going to get what that actually is going to be. All right, so this one is basically going to be 72.1. All right, so let's just say 72, so we keep things simple. So it's going to be 72 Newton. Sorry, this is just the magnitude, not the vector. So this is the magnitude. Now the question is, what is the direction? Okay, fine. So the direction, I still say 10 of theta, all right? And then when I say 10 of theta, I just going to say B over A, so whatever is Y over X. So it's basically going to be B over A, and then this is basically going to be 60 over 40, and then which means that my theta is going to be 56.3 degrees, all right? So this is 56.3 degrees, um, and then it's just going to say below. Uh, so let me just make space. This is going to be below the positive x direction or x axis it's up, it's up to you i normally say x x most of the books will say x axis some of the books will say um x i normally say below the x direction so i know that the positive x direction is in white because i always choose it like this so remember you must always specify so that we know what do you have you chosen as x right so the safest way is just to say below the x axis positive x axis that's the safest way to do it or just use the north of east, north of west, whatever the case may be. All right. Um, so in this case, it would be east and south, so south of east. In this case, you could say that 56 degrees south of east. All right. All right. So this is fine. At least now I know how to actually subtract vectors that are perpendicular to one another. All right. Now the question is, now it's the same. I mean, if you wanted B minus A, so the same rule applies. For instance, if you look at vector C, Vector C is going that way, right? So this is the direction that vector C. And this is vector C is basically A minus B. Now remember what I said. I said that A minus B is the same as the negative of B minus A. So I don't have space. So which means that if I find the negative of this vector, it's going to be B minus A. So which means that B minus A is just going to be the same vector, but facing that way. So you could join it here. It's going to go that way. So this one is going to be vector C, where vector C is B minus A. So the only thing that will change is the direction. The magnitude, you're going to get the same magnitude. The direction, you're going to get the same direction. So this works all the time, basically. All right? As long as you have two vectors. Now when you have three vectors, four vectors, and then it's just another story. Okay? Okay, now um, let's look at a case whereby these vectors are not perpendicular to one another. And then how do you go about doing that? This you have vectors that are just not perpendicular to one another. All right, so when you have vectors that are not perpendicular to one another, um, maybe let's just say you have a vector like this, and then this is vector A, 
and vector A is 25 degrees in that direction. And then there's my Cartesian plane, right? There's my Cartesian plane, there's my angle. Then I have vector, let's just say this one is, 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 is 48 degrees. Um, and this is vector P. All right, so let's not do the vectors. So I can put the magnitudes. So this one will be, I think I said 40 Newton. And then this one, I'm going to say is going to be 60 Newton. All right, so the question is, okay, fine. So how do we go about subtracting this? I still want the vector C, so I still want C. And I want C such that C is basically A minus B. All right, that's basically how I want my vector C. All right, so how do I go about doing that? All right, so in this case, for instance, since I want A minus B, so my A minus B is going to be equals to, I have to break this vector into components. So let's just do the green line here. So here I'm going to have my vector AX, now we already know this, we already know because we've done this, so I'll be working a little bit faster. Then this is A1. And then this one, we already know that this is going to be Bx. And then this one is going to be By, basically. So these are vectors. All of them are vectors. All right, so this is vector. This is a vector as well. So I could put the vectors there. All right. So we know how to find components, I think, by now. So it's 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 not going to be difficult for us to find these components. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do them in maybe maybe okay, it's just just to make sure that you guys don't get confused. So a x, let's just find a x first as a vector. The vector a x is just going to be a, and then it's going to be cos of 25 degrees, and the direction is going to be a negative x, as you can see. All right. So when you substitute the number, it's going to be 40 cos of 25 degrees. Then the negative is going to come this side in the x direction. And then so my ax is going to be that 40 cos of 25, basically. And then that becomes 36. All right, this is 36.3. So I'm just going to leave it at 36 in the x direction. And then it's going to be negative here. That's my vector ax. So my B, my vector A, Y, not B, Y, I'm going to skip steps. It's just going to be A, which is going to be 40. And then sine of 25 degrees, right? So I just kept, I just skipped this first step and then I just wrote it from this second step. All right, so this is A and then sine of 25. It's positive Y, so I'm just going to have it as positive Y. So let's see this one. So this one is 17 degrees, 17 um, in the y direction. So it's 17 neutral in the y direction. So how about vector bx? So let's just do bx somewhere. Uh, maybe let's just do it here. So bx is also going to be b. Now this one is going to be b, which is going to be 60. Uh, and then the cos of 48 degrees. Now I'm assuming, and then this one is positive x. So I'm assuming that you we, we already know this now. All right, so, okay, so that is going to be 40 in the x direction. So that's the vector Px, this is Ay. So now we know all the vectors. It's easier to do it like that. All right, so let me try and, and push it. Um, I don't know why it's going that way. So let's try and push it that way. And then so, Vector by, vector by is going to be equals to 60. And then this is going to be sine because it's opposite that. And then of 48 degrees. And then this one also is on the y. So let's push it up again. So you won't see the sketch now. Maybe let's also try and bring it this side a bit. Maybe. All right. So then this one basically becomes... Uh, this one is sine, and then that basically becomes 45. All right, so this basically becomes 45y. So now I have all my vectors with me. I have my vector ax, which is negative 36 in the x direction. I have my vector ay, which is going to be 17 in the y direction. And then I have my vector um, y is y. Yeah, y is going to be small. It's fine. Then I have bx, the vector bx, which is going to be 40 
in the x direction then i have my vector by which is going to be 45 in the y direction so now then i can start working i'm looking for vector c such that vector c is a minus b now remember i can break it into components to ax plus ay now these are vectors so you put brackets then the minus sign comes here and then this is bx vector plus uh, by remember you're saying you are just breaking up remember vector b is bx plus by vector a is ax plus ay so that is why you're just breaking it so you have to be very careful this is a different color and then my vector c and then i just substitute i group all the x's let me just group them here since maybe i have some space here so if i group i take this is going to be ax now there's a negative sign here so i'm going to put negative bx so i haven't considered the directions i'm just doing the maths from this this is just going to be the x component then put a plus after doing this put a plus then group all the y's so the first y is a y if there was a negative here, you would have to put a negative, but it, it will always be like this anyway. Right? These steps will always look the same. It doesn't matter what the configuration is. All right. And then you have this minus, so it's going to multiply that minus by. So this is what you have. And then from here, you can now start working on um, getting um, everything else. So you have vector C, and then vector C is going to be ax is going to be there's ax is minus 36 is it 36 hey, 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 hey. why don't i trust it oh i said it's 36 36 40 cos of 25 is that 36 so yeah it's 36 all right so that's fine all right so that's going to be 36 it's minus so you just take it as it is because you're just substituting that vector then there's a minus which is this minus all right and then that minus is going to be 40 because now it's bx which is 40 in the x direction close this bracket and then just say plus here and then close this bracket as well and then this one is going to be ay so ay ay for for ay is 17 in the y direction minus and then this one is 45 in the y direction all right so from here i mean there is six so you have a minus and a minus so it's going to add so this is basically going to be 76 in the x direction and it's minus because there's a minus basically right and then this one is 17 minus 45 all right which is like 35 and then which is like 30 and then basically you minus that and then it's going to be 28 but then it's going to be negative because this negative is going to come here. I think you know that. So this is going to be 28 y. All right. So that's fine. Um, and then this is c. This is c. So this is how vector c is. So if they say leave your answer in vector component form, it's like this. But if they say they want the magnitude, you already know how to find the magnitude. You're just going to do the square root of that. Uh, the two and then if you want the angle you're just going to do the theta of that so that is fine right and then you can actually draw this vector so you already know all the steps uh, from here so that's not that's not going to be a problem if you draw this vector it's going to be minus 76 which is that that's minus 76 that's the x component then the y component is minus 28 which is this one so basically you expect a vector that is going to go like that all right so that's the vector that you expect vector c you expect vector c to look like that all right then theta is going to be below the negative x axis remember you always put your axis where the two vectors the tail where the tail uh the tail of the result and the tail of the first vector is so it's going to be below the x axis all right so the other parts i think you are very much familiar with i don't think i have to explain myself too much on it all right all right so i don't have to explain too much basically all right okay so this is good now we can actually move to the two uh, final sections that are very important and I'll, and I'll explain why they're important in physics as well all right so now the question is so we now know how to add we now know how to subtract vectors irrespective of their directions now the issue is 
how do you multiply vectors? So vectors, you don't multiply vectors like numbers. So you could multiply by a scalar. Remember, a scalar can be just a number or it can be a quantity. So that's fine. You could multiply a vector by a scalar. For instance, if I have vector A, I'll still use vector A is equal to 40 Newton. Then I could get vector C, for instance, such that C is three times vector A. So I, I've done an example like this, and then it's just basically going to be three times times 40 in the x direction. And then basically this becomes 120 in the x direction. So basically vector C is going to be very long, three times the size of this vector in the same direction. This is you are multiplying by a scalar. When you're doing this, you are actually multiplying by a scalar. So the question is, what happens if you basically multiply two vectors? So we have two ways we can multiply two vectors. So just look at the first one, and then the first one is actually called the scalar product. All right, so that's the first way. The first way is going to be called a scalar product. I'll tell you now why it's called the scalar product. So this is known as the scalar product. And I'll give you examples as to where we use it in physics, for instance. Now, this scalar product is also known as the dot product. Okay? It's known as the dot product. All right, so it could be called the scalar product or the dot product. Let me change, let me use blue. All right. Um, okay, let me just have it here. All right, so why the scalar? Now, let's, suppose I have a vector A. There's vector A. And I have vector B. And then there's vector B. So you should join your vectors tail to tail. All the time you should join your vectors tail to tail. And then there's an angle theta between the two vectors. All right. So you could find the scalar product, which is A dot. So you are doing it. You're multiplying two vectors. You say normally how we call it is we call it A dot B. So that A dot P is going to be the magnitude, which is the, the magnitude of vector A, the magnitude of vector B, cos of the angle between the two vectors. Another way you could write it, it's the way we've been doing it. You could just say this is going to be equals to AB cos of theta. All right. So that's basically what um, the dot product is going to be. So for instance, let me say I have vector A and then vector A is just 40 Newton and then vector B is 60 Newton. And then if I want the scalar product, so A dot B is going to be equals to 40 multiplied by 60 and then multiplied by cos of theta, theta, sorry, let me just say theta in this case is 36 degrees for instance and then it's going to be 36 degrees. Then you could actually get even a negative number or a positive number. It just depends on the quantity that you're measuring as to what's the meaning of that. All right. So you multiply it by 60. Sorry. And then this is cos of 36. <clears throat> All right. So the scalar product for this one is going to 1,442, basically, whatever. So in, so in this case, since it's Newton multiplied by Newton is going to be Newton squared, basically. If you had units, I mean, since I have Newtons here and I have Newtons there. All right. Now, another thing that you should note with the scalar product is that A dot of B is the same as B dot of A. So it's just going to be the same. Both of them are going to be A, B, cos of theta. Because it doesn't matter whether you start with the magnitude of B multiplied by the magnitude of A, it's just going to be the same. All right. So that's fine. Um, so let's just do another example, for instance, um, where we can find maybe sort of a, a bit more different pro problem. So and then more involved problems as to how we can actually find the scalar product in that problem. All right, so let me say, for instance, I have that vector, and then I have vector A. Uh, we're going to make our A 40 newtons all the time, and then let's just give it an angle of 35 degrees. And then we have vector B, and there's my vector B, and my vector B is going to be um, my vector B, maybe let me just say it's going to be 40. 
49 degrees i don't want to make it exactly let's just call it just say it's going to be 49 degrees and this is 60 newton all right so how can i actually find that so what you could do is you already have this so the only thing that you need to do here is you need to find the angle between so what you have is you have vector a like this all right and then you have vector b like this this is vector b this is vector a so you need to find this angle here all right so how you could actually find that angle is you could draw a line like this so this is 90 so 49 minus that that is going to be 41 this one is going to be 41 and then 35 minus 90 that's basically going to be sorry uh that is going to be 55 so you're going to say 55 plus 41 so meaning that here it's going to be 41 degrees and then here is going to be 55 degrees so you have to add the 55 degrees and the 41 degrees and then you basically end up with 96 degrees okay so you end up with 96 degrees all right let's just confirm that it's going to be 35 um I'm be confident that's going to be the case in 49 and it's 180 so i'm calling it. okay so you have the angle between the two vectors is that so in this one if you wanted a dot of b so this is going to be 40 and 60 and then this is going to be a cos of 96 so you expect this to be negative all right so this is going to be 40 multiplied by 60 and then the cos of 96 which is going to be minus 250 all right so it's negative because of the angle between the, the two basically means that these vectors are greater so you must you remember the cos graph those of you that remember the cos graph it's here this is 90 degrees and then this is 180 and then this is 270 and then this is 360 so it is negative between 90 and 180 degrees so here between these two so everything here is negative all right okay so no sorry 270 not 180 270 degrees so 90 degrees and 270 it's basically negative and it's positive on these two sides all right so basically that's it so even this one is going to be neutron squared now where when do we actually apply this for instance if you look at work done work done is just basically force dot displacement right so let me just write displacement as that so you'll see this when you're actually doing work done which is basically force multiplied by distance which is whatever the displacement vector is and then cos of the angle between the two vectors so you i'll discuss this when i'm actually doing work i'll upload videos uh, when i'm doing work so this is how we use it in physics and then uh, let's just do another example two more examples on this so at least we we'll look at different perspectives of, of this okay so another one for instance let me just say i have vector a i don't know why it's doing that if i have vector a and then i say my vector a is 4x now i'm using my when i did my first day we used to use the i and the j notation and then i'm doing like six um let's just say six y and then i have vector b and my vector b is actually um minus three x uh, let's just say minus four um, y. So I have these two vectors, all right? So now when I have this and I'm being asked to actually find the dot product of the two vectors. So what I have to do is I have to find the magnitude of these vectors and I have to find the angle between the two vectors, all right? So I'll do this one with another method, one method and I'll do it with another method, all right? So I need to find the magnitude of A, I need to find the magnitude of B and I need to find theta between the two vectors. All right, let's just start with a the magnitude of a is just going to be the square root of 4 squared plus 6 squared all right so that's going basically to be equals to 4 squared plus 6 squared which is 7.2 all right and then the magnitude of b is going to be 3 squared uh, plus 4 squared um, this is 9 plus 16 which is 25 so this one is just going to be 5 Right, so now I have the magnitude. Now, how about the angle? So let's just draw it. The first vector is 4. So the first vector you go, if I have a Cartesian plane, there's my Cartesian plane. I right, say so let's draw it. So the first vector is going to be 4 plus 6. 
going up, right? So the first vector is this one. So this is vector A, right? So this is vector A. The second vector is minus three, there's minus three, minus four, there's minus four. So the second vector is going to be this one here, all right? So there's the second vector B. So now I have to find these angles here, this theta angle, and I have to find this phi angle in order for me to know what is what basically, all right? So if I find the theta angle, I can find the theta angle. So the theta angle is going to be given by 10 of theta is going to be equals to six. Remember it's six y, a is six y. So this is vector a, so this is six, and then this is four. And then here, this is minus three, and then this is minus four, All right? So this one is going to be six divided by four, which means that my theta is going to be equals to the arc of that. Uh, which is 6 over 4. Okay, so that's basically 56 degrees. So it's approximately 56 degrees. I'm going to take it as that. So let's just find the phi angle. The phi angle is going to be this one. Don't put the negative. Just, so just say that over 3. All right. And then basically this becomes over 3. And it's also 53. Oh, so approximately. So which means that my phi is approximately 53. So, so now when you have it like this, so basically it means that this angle is 56 and then this angle is 53. All right. So generally what you want is you want the angle. So if you look at these two vectors, right, these two vectors, 53 is a little bit above 45. So it's going to go like that. Um, right. So. 53 is a little bit above 45, so this is 45. If this is the 45 line, all right? So if this is the 45 line, 53 is going to be a little bit above that, all right? That's vector A. And then here, here, because that's the phi, is going to be a little bit above that as well, below that, sorry, and then that's that. So this angle is larger than this angle here. So you want to take the angle that is smaller, just pick whatever the angle that is smaller between the two vectors, even though it's still going to be um, more than that, right? So you want to take this angle that is smaller. So you have to find this angle here. So let's call it alpha. And then this angle here is 90. So you already know what theta is. And alpha is very simple. It's just going to be 53. Um, it's going to be 90 minus 53, right, basically. And then this is going to be 40, not 47, it's going to be 37. All right, so this is going to be 37 degrees. So this alpha here is going to be 37 degrees, this alpha. And then you have 90, then you have this angle here. All right, maybe let me try and just explain this. Let me just put the angles and then you can see everything, what I'm saying. All right, so I have a vector, so let me draw a bigger diagram. So I need to find a smaller angle in between. So what I have is I have one that is 56 degree radius. This is 90, this one is 90. Then I have this one, which is 53 degrees. And also this is so now the question is, what are these red angles? The red angles are the ones that I don't know. All right, so this is this one. So this one, because this 53 plus this angle must make me must make 90. So this is going to be 37. This is 90 degrees. And this is also going to be 90 degrees. And then this one here, actually let me use a different color for the other side. So for this side, the blue the blue side is going to be 90. And then this blue side, so it's 56 here, which is going to be 40. And then this is going to be 34. Now we have to compare the two. So because now what I have is I have vector A and then I have vector B, right? And then I have this side. And then I have, I want to take the smaller side, the angle between the two vectors, you want the smaller side, all right? 
Okay, so this is going to be the smaller side, basically. That's what you have. So if you look at, if you add these ones, it's 53 plus 90 plus 34. All right, so you just do that. I don't have the time to do that in my head. That's 90 plus 34, and then that's basically 177. All right, and then this one <clears throat> is going to be 37 plus 90 plus, uh, I think I drew it the other way around. This is 183. So this is 183. So I drew it the other way around. So you have to take the smaller angle. So which basically means that in reality, this looks like this in reality. So in reality, this actually looks like that. This looks like that in reality. And then the red one is the one that is actually more, right? And then this is your vector A. This one is your vector A here. All right, so you're going to take this 177 if you want to actually solve it. And then so which means that your A dot B is going to be that magnitude. I think we found the magnitude to be 7.2 and 5. All right, so it's 7.2, and then this is 5, and then cos of 117, 177, sorry. All right, they are very close to one another. If it was 180, you just take it as 180, it doesn't matter. All right, so it just becomes 7.2, sorry, 7.2 multiplied by 5, and then cos of 177. All right. So this is just basically minus 35.9. So it's just basically minus 36, whatever the case may be. So if you used 183, you were going to get the same answer anyway. All right. So that is fine. So another way we can actually find the scalar product is basically using algebra. So I we had A is equals to or x not y plus 6y and then we had vector b which was minus 3x minus 4y so i want to find the scalar product for this one which is the dot product so i'm just going to take that expression which is that vector okay so i'm treating it like an algebra expression basically and then this is minus 3x minus 4y. All right. So this is going to be equals to, I'm going to take this 4x, multiply it with this 3x. So it becomes 4x hat. You say dot, which is this dot. And then you say minus 3x hat. All right. And then just write a plus. And then this 4, you multiply it with this minus 4. So you're going to have 4. And then you dot it, you don't multiply it, sorry, you dot it, uh, let me just not do it like that. So this is plus, this is going to be 4x hat, you dot it with minus 4y hat, and then let me just open space here. Now, so I'm going to have this 6 and this 3, so it's going to be plus 6y hat, you dot it with minus 3 x hat which is this minus 3 then you take 6 you multiply it with this one or dot it sorry and then that becomes plus and then you say 6 y hat and then you dot it with this minus 4 y which is minus 4 y hat right and then from here let me just write everything this side so i have space i have 4 minus 3 is going to come out, and then I'll be left with x hat dot x. And then I'm going to have 4, and then minus 4, and then x hat, which is this. So the vectors, you can take out the coefficients, and then you just leave the vectors. The vectors, you can multiply them, you have to dot them. And then this becomes y. And then this becomes 6 multiplied by minus 3 y dotted with x and then you have plus sorry it's going to okay plus again everything is plus for now because the minuses i still haven't multiplied everything so this is minus four and then this is y hat dot with y hat 
All right, so simplify it further. This is minus 12 x hat dotted with x hat. Then this is minus 16 x hat dotted with y hat. And then this is minus 18 y hat dotted with x hat. And then this is minus 24 y dotted with y. Okay, so, so far, so good. So the issue now is I don't know what to do with this x head dot with x head and x head with y, y with x, y with y. Okay, so the most important thing that you need to understand is that the magnitude of x head is going to be 1. And the magnitude of y head is also going to be 1. All right. So when I say x dot with x, so I'm going to write the magnitude like this, x, the magnitude of x multiplied by the magnitude of x, and then cos of um, the angle between the two vectors. Now let's look at the two vectors. This is x hat, this is x hat. So both vectors are in the same direction. So I said this is going to be one, this is going to be one, cos of zero. So basically this is one multiplied by one multiplied by one and this is one. All right, now let's look at X and Y. All right, so X hat dotted with Y hat, this is going to be X, Y, cos of theta. So let's look at it, this is X, this is Y, the angle between them is 90, okay, so Basically, this becomes, uh, let me just, all right. So this becomes one, one, cos of 90, and this is 90 degrees is going to be zero because cos of 90 degrees is zero, okay? And then if I dot y with x, let's look at it again. I have x like this, and then I have y. It's the same thing. It doesn't matter the order. It's still 90 degrees. So since I'm going to get the cos of y, this is just going to be y with x cos of theta. So this is going to be 1 multiplied by 1 cos of 90. Cos of 90 degrees is 0. This is also going to be 0. Then let's look at the y one. Uh, if I say y at dotted with y hat, let's look at it again. y is like this. Another y is like this. So the angle between them is zero because they are parallel to one another. So this becomes y with y cos of theta. And this becomes one, one cos of zero, which go, is just going to be equal to one. All right, so basically this is how you treat the dots. Okay, so this basically becomes minus 12. We said this is going to be one. Uh, minus 16 multiplied by this now is going to be 0. And then we said this is 18 multiplied. We said this is going to be 0 again. 24 and then we said this is going to be minus 1. So I have minus 12 minus 24 which becomes minus 36. All right. So let's just compare the two vectors and see if they are the same. So the algebra method gives me minus 36 and the trigonometry method also gives me minus 36. So both of them are correct. So you can use either depending on which one. I think this one is shorter. The trigonometric method is shorter. The algebra method is a little bit longer. But I mean, I mean, if you used to it, you can even do it in two steps, basically. All right. So I just had to do all the steps because I had to show you how to get to the answer. All right. Okay, so let's continue. Okay, so now we are going to talk about the vector product and the vector product, basically what it is, it's also known as the cross product. So you could say cross product, you could say a vector product. So this one is a little bit tricky because it's you get a vector out, you multiply two vectors, you get a vector out. The scalar product, you multiply two vectors, you get a scalar out, which means you just get a magnitude, no direction. This one, you must specify the magnitude, you must specify the direction. All right, so for instance, if I have a vector A, I'm going to have a similar example. There's vector A and I will have vector B. And there's an angle between the two vectors. I can actually get A cross, that's why they say it's a cross product, and then B. 
this is going to be equals the magnitude, which means the magnitude of the cross product is going to be given by a, the magnitude of a, b, sine of theta. This just gives you the magnitude, it doesn't give you the direction. This just gives you the magnitude, not the direction. All right, so that's very important. The direction you're going, to, you're going to get it from something that we call the right hand rule. So what you do with the right hand rule is that you look at, if you are looking for A cross B, so your first vector is A, your second vector is B. So here the order matters. It's very important that you get the order. So what you do is you take your right hand, just use your right hand, and then you point along A. So I'm going to point with my finger. There's my finger. I'm going to point towards A. There's my finger is pointing towards A. That's my pointing finger. Right? And then the three fingers that are left are going to point towards the second vector, which is B. There's vector B. So this is the, the longest finger, followed by the second one, followed by the small one. All right? And then there's my hand. So these are my fingers. So you curl them towards that, that vector. So you'll notice that your thumb is going to go into the board. And then there's your hand. So your thumb is the one that gives you the direction. So your thumb is going that way. So you have your A vector, and then you have your B vector, and then your thumb is pointing inside the board. All right? I don't know how to draw it inside. All right? So this is your A vector. This is your B vector. Your three fingers are curling towards your B vector. Then this one is going inside the board. So normally what we normally do is, so in my case, for instance, my index finger, if I orient this, my index finger is going inside my screen. You'll see, not my index, my, my thumb is actually going inside my screen. All right. So that's the, the thumb is the one that is going to tell me the direction. All right. So that's the one. So this is the right hand rule. So how you would actually do it when it's going inside the box or inside the screen, you would actually use this. So it means that it's going into the page. For instance, if you are looking at a book, it will be going inside the page, into the page, into the screen, whatever. If it's going out, meaning that it's coming out. I, for instance, if I say to you, find me B cross of A. So what you will do is you would point, your first finger will point. So your first finger will point here. Right, and then your three fingers are going to point here. There's these are your three, these are your three, these are your three fingers. And then you are going to have your palm. So your palm is going to be like this. So there's your palm. I'm very bad at drawing. All right. And then your thumb is going to point out. So this one is A cross B. So I, when I started B, this one there's my nail here then there's my thumb so there's my thumb there all right so this one i'm pointing out so what is, what is happening is that i have my vector b here this is my first vector then my three fingers are going to curl towards my a vector there's my a vector and then my thumb actually points outside out of the board so when it's pointing out of the board we just use this so this is out of into you can say into the page out of the page so that's the difference between the two so this one is b cross of a so already from this you can actually tell quite a number of things you could tell that we can actually come up with a rule and say well if cross of, if i know if i want the cross of a this is going to be the same as the minus b cross a so this is going to be the same so which means that if i find a cross b whatever the direction of a cross b is if i want b cross a i just have to change it so a cross b is going into the page that's this is a cross b but then uh, b cross a is going out of the page which is b cross a that's basically what it means 
All right. So these are the two vectors. So the say the size the size is going to be the same, but the, the but the direction is going to be different. So this is very important because you're going to use this a lot. So maybe the question is where? I'll give you just examples now. All right. So for instance, when you're doing rotation, there's something called a torque. Torque is R cross F. All right, so this is a situation whereby you have a rod, and then maybe you apply a force that way, you apply a force that way, and the rod has a radius of r. So, in order for you to find out whether it's going to rotate or not, you need to find it, whether it has a torque or not. If it has a torque, it's going to rotate, and you're going to, and the torque is a cross product. Another one, for instance, if you want the force, the, the magnetic uh, force that is experienced by a charge, if I have a charge, maybe don't worry if you don't understand, I have a charge, and then there's a magnetic field. I am going to find the magnetic force, which is basically going to be the charge. And then I'm going to say this is going to be V cross B. So this is basically a cross, a cross product as well. So you're going to use this in physics quite a number of times. And, and it's done also even in calculus. If you're doing like uh, calculus-based physics, you're going to use that cross product a number of times. All right, so you have to know this, especially if you're doing engineering and you, you're doing like physics major, um it's fine you have to know this but if you're doing like um maybe like physics for health sciences physics for other other modules that are not necessarily core physics subjects maybe they may not necessarily require you to know this so let's just do examples again we just do those three three types of examples um and we can actually use the examples that we that we use basically and then it's just two right so okay it's fine so let me just say I have a vector A and then I have a vector B and vector A has a magnitude of 40 Newton and vector B has a magnitude of 60 Newton and maybe let's just say this is 38 degrees. So I could actually find A cross B. The magnitude, this is the, this just make, I'm finding the magnitude to be given by, so this is how you'd write it, the magnitude would be A, B and then call, not not cos. Why am I saying cos? Um, this is a b sine of theta, which is going to be equals to 40, 60 sine of 38 degrees. All right. So that's basically it, and then you're just going to get what that's going to be. This is 40 multiplied by 60, and then sine of 38 degrees, and then this basically becomes 1477. Let's just say seven eight round it off all right and then it's going to be newton squared in this case all right now in terms of the direction you would take your you point your finger towards a curl your four fingers you could even point your four fingers curl them towards b your thumb is going to point inside and so what you could do is you could just say and you know that it's just basically um going um away from you meaning that it's going into the board right so that's basically how we actually know that this is the case. All right, so that's fine. Um, okay, so now in terms of the, I'm not going to do, I'm not going to do an example whereby it is, but I'm going to do this one. Let me say I have A and then this is 4X and then plus 6Y, just the same way that we had that one. And then this is B and then this is basically minus 3 x minus i think we said 4y so you would remember we found the magnitude of this one was we found that a was 7.2 we found that b was 5 and then i think we found that the angle between the two of them which i'm going to call theta i think we found it to be 177 all right so that's what we found the angle to be for, for, for this one so that's fine that's what we found okay so you could actually also just, you follow the same process and then you just find the dot product. Now, I want us to actually do the mathematical one on this. This is a situation whereby I'm not going to just follow this method. I'm going to say, I want four X plus six Y, all right? Cross minus three X minus four y all right so this is basically what i want to find all right so what's going to happen here 
is I am going to have a similar case whereby this is just going to be equals to 4 times minus 3, which is minus 12. And then this is going to be x cross with x. All right, we are following similar, we're just multiplying 4x multiplied by 3x, and then 4 times 3 is going to come out. So I'm hoping you, you already understand this. And then you, so you multiply with this first, and then afterwards you multiply with that first. So it becomes 4 times 4, this is going to be minus 16, and then this is going to be that cross y, and then this and this is going to be minus 18, and then this is going to be y cross with x all right so and then the last one which is this multiplied by 4 this is going to be minus 24 because we're going to say 6 times 4 and then you're going to say y hat minus y multiplied cross cross with y hat basically and then so this basically becomes y cross with y okay so that's basically what you have now we have to go back to remember what we did with the cross with the dot product all right so now these ones, if you look at it, um, if you're crossing x with x, this is the same as x, x, sine of theta. But now sine of theta is parallel to one another, which means that basically is zero. So which means that this is going to be x cross with x is going to be one multiplied by one sine of zero, which is zero. And this is the same as y cross with y. This is going to be zero because y is going to be like this and theta is going to be zero. So which means that theta is going to be zero. Whenever theta is zero, this is zero. Whenever theta is 180, this is zero as well. Now, however, when they are perpendicular, for instance, when you have x cross with y, because they are going to be different, x cross with y is going to be x, is going to be y, sine of 90 degrees y because x is like this and y is like this and this is 90 degrees so this is sine of 90 degrees which is 1 so this is 1 multiplied by 1 multiplied by 1 which is equals to 1 all right but this is different from y cross with okay the magnitude is going to be the same now let's look at the direction right so this is where you're gonna this is where you're going to choose whether the direction you're going to choose out of the page or into the page as positive or negative. So what I, so for instance, choose the direction of x plus y to be positive. Find that direction first. So how are you gonna find that direction? You're gonna take your four fingers, line them up along x, so they're going to go like this, and then curl them towards y using your right hand. So there's this, and then you curl them towards y. So your fingers end up curled like that. Then you see that your thumb is going to point up outside like this. Um, okay, so if you were to draw it, you're going to have something like that. And then there it is. And then your thumb is going to point outward like that. And then your four fingers are going to be curled like that. So you're going to have a situation like that. There's your thumb basically. All right, so your thumb is going to be pointing out, so which means that this will be coming out of the screen or out of the page in, in your case. If you're looking at the screen, it's going to be out of the screen. If you look at the page, it's going to be out of the page. All right, so you take that as positive, so which means that this is positive. So if I do y cross x, all right, and then this becomes the magnitude of y, which is 1, the magnitude of x, which is 1, and then sine of theta. I mean, it's still the same. I mean, it's still 90 degrees. So this is going to be sine of 9, which is 1. But because the direction is because the direction for this one, if you do it, you will go, you're going to take your four fingers, point them in the Y, curl them to the X. There's the X. So you curl them there. Then you'll see that your thumb is going to point inside the page. All right. So you're going to have a thumb that is going inside of the page. All right, so if that is the case, so you're going to take that as negative, and then this is going to be negative one. So that's basically the conversion that you have to apply in both of these uh, to just find out which one you're going to take positive, which one you're going to take as negative. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to erase. 
Okay, so now let's go back to this one. Now, when we go back to this one, remember we said x dotted with x, all right, is parallel to one another, is sine of zero, this is going to be zero. So this is more like 12 multiplied by zero. And then this one is more like 16. Then here, since it's x plus y, you're multiplying it positive one. Then this one is 18. And then since this is y cross with x, is going to be multiplied by minus one. And I think I made a mistake, or oh, this is y and y. I thought this was x and y. So this is 24 multiplied by 0. So you end up with a situation whereby this is minus 16 minus plus 18. So you're expecting to have 2 here. All right. So that should be the case when you actually have those two vectors there. So we can actually check if that is the case as well. And if you just do, for instance, you can do a, a quick check. So you could say, remember what A is? You could say A cross with B. And then this is going to be 7.2. This is going to be 5 cos of, remember we said it's going to be 107. We found it when we did the, pro the dot product. The answer is going, not, not, not cos, sorry, sine. Sine of, of 107. And then you're going to find it's going to be 11. 9, 1.9, so which is approximately 2. So basically, these two answers are actually corresponding. Okay, so both methods are fine. You can actually just use both method, methods. Okay, so I think this is fine on vectors. I know I had to go a little bit in, in depth uh, because of I just wanted to cover everything and just make sure that we have everything covered. Otherwise, guys, um, this was a fun section. Uh, for us to do and then i'm going to see you guys whenever i upload the next video all right cheers enjoy